Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking about the best new sewing machines to buy. All these machines can be purchased out of the store today and I will leave a link to each one of them in the description box below. Before we get into talking about the best new sewing machines to purchase, um, I have to talk about the criteria for the machines that I created in order to come up with this list. All the machines on this list are multi-purpose, meaning that you wouldn't be missing out if you only had one sewing machine. However, these machines are not uh, task specific. Uh, for example, uh, you have your daily driver car and then you might have a truck that you use for hauling stuff around. Today, we're only going to be discussing the daily drivers. We're not going to be going into talking about that truck that you use to haul stuff around like your HD9 or your uh, Juki 2010 QI. Um, first, you need to have at least four feed dogs. Um, believe it or not, not all machines have four feed dogs. For example, the Janome 1000 only has three feed dogs and I don't feel that that is sufficient for being able to feed fabrics through a sewing machine. Um, the next thing is adjustable foot pressure. Not all sewing machines have adjustable foot pressure and to me this is a deal breaker. However, there are a few exceptions to the rule. For example, I have a Bernina 1010 and it does not have adjustable foot pressure but it has never been a problem for me. However, on most machines it is necessary to have adjustable foot pressure because um, when you are sewing with something like a jersey knit your fabric will curl underneath the machine if your foot pressure is too heavy. Um, next, all machines should have a um, feed dog drop because without a feed dog drop, it makes it very hard to do things like free motion quilting or adding a buttonhole. Um, the other thing that I found very important is the speed. If you're sewing on a machine that goes 800, then you are really missing out because that is extremely slow and ain't nobody got time for that. Janome is a Japanese company, but today many of the machines are either made in Taiwan or Thailand. Also, Elna's are made in the same manufacturing plants, but often are the same machine just rebadged. Um, the first machine in the lineup I would like to discuss is the Janome 3000 or 5000. Um, I consider the Janome 3000 and or 5000 to be uh, the Honda Accord of all sewing machines because over the years those machines have had different model numbers but uh, have lasted a very long time. Many people uh, note that they have had their machine for 20 years or more and that it's still working which I think is a really great sign. Uh, there are minor differences between the 3000 and the 5000, but we'll get to those a little bit later. Um, the similarities are that they both have 18 stitches, five feed dogs, a speed of 860 and four millimeter stitch length. The differences are that the 5000 has more utility stitches, whereas the 3000 has more decorative. The 5000 has a seven millimeter stitch width whereas the 3000 has a 6.5 millimeter stitch width. Uh, the Janome 5000 has more complex uh, control panel while the 3000 has a more simplistic control panel. Now I would recommend getting the 5000 if you're a beginner because of the more complex control panel that just gives you more directions on what to select. Um, also, the 5000 with the 7 millimeter stitch width is a little better for doing uh, top stitching with a zigzag stitch or some of the other stitches because it just looks better. So I would probably pick that one. A lot of people use the 3000 and 5000 for bag making. However, I would not recommend this as a sole bag making machine simply because you don't have a, a good amount of speed control, which is really important with bag making where you need to slow down to uh, stitch through thick layers. And then also um, you end up with a lot of skipped stitches when you're working with multiple layers of thick materials. So it's really not made for bag making, though people do use it for that. The next best machine in the Janome lineup is the Skyline 6 or 7. Both of the machines feature 9mm stitch width, 5mm stitch length, 
last stitch recall, which I think is excellent because most uh, electronic machines lose their settings when you turn off the machine and power it back on. And this is just great just to hold your place. Uh, it also has a speed of 1000, which is pretty good, I think. And then the other great feature about both of the machines is that they have AccuFeed, which means that your fabric can easily feed through the machine. The differences between the six and the seven are as follows. The seven has a touch screen, 240 stitches, and 11 buttonholes, whereas the six has 196 stitches and 10 buttonholes. I don't recommend earlier models of this machine because they don't come with the AccuFeed system and there's no stitch recall. And I just think that the stitch recall is a really important feature. Um, and it's best to just get your bang for your buck for by going ahead with the uh, Skyline 6. Now there is a Skyline 9 and it comes with an embroidery unit, but I feel like once you get to this particular price point, your embroidery uh, machine should be a standalone and not a single needle um, combo machine. Now let's go over Juki machines. Juki began in 1945 and it's a Japanese company. They're they are most known for their industrial sewing machines, but in the past few years, they have been making a lot of home sewing machines. The most notable line of machines from Juki, in my humble opinion, is the HZL model. The HZL uh, models came in a wide variety of model numbers, but to me, the two best ones are the DX5 and DX7 because they have a speed of 1050, whereas the other models have a speed of 900. However, if you are not able to afford a machine at this price point, I would definitely go down and look at the F300 through F600 models. They just have a slightly slower speed and a few less uh, stitches and features. Um, the DX5 and DX7 both have the 7mm stitch width and 5mm length. They have 16 buttonholes and uh, the one standout feature that I find is that they have a straight stitch slide plate um, and the straight stitch plate just prevents your fabrics from being sucked down into the needle plate when you are stitching with lightweight or delicate fabrics. Um, I really do love this line of machines and it's definitely what I would go for if I was getting a Juki and I was looking for something that had a little bit more to it than just a straight stitch machine. Uh, I do know that their straight stitch machines are very notable and a lot of people love them, but uh, they won't do certain things. They're not as versatile. So that's why I went with the HZL model. Singer is the most well-known sewing machine brand in the world. However, there are a few things that must be mentioned about Singer before we continue on with describing machines in this best sewing machines lineup. Singer, Viking, and Faf all merged to create one company back in the early 2000s. Uh, the Singer machines stopped being made in the United States. The Vikings stopped being made in Sweden and five stopped being made in Germany. Instead, all of the machines are made in Shanghai, China, and the quality has suffered. A lot of the parts are no longer made in all metal, but they're made in plastic, uh, which really decreases the longevity of the machines. Uh, however, a lot of people still do love these three brands, and the most well-known machine out of all the machines really in my lineup is the Singer Heavy Duty. However, this is my personal least favorite machine out of all the machines. Uh, the machine has a impressive speed of 1100 and it also has a metal needle plate, which is very impressive for the particular price point that it comes in at. Uh, now the 4452 model of the uh, Singer heavy duty oftentimes comes with a free walking foot and their walking foot is usually an expensive accessory so it's quite amazing that the machine comes with that however i don't like the machine because of all of the plastic on the internal parts uh, 
yes it is all mechanical and it will last you a few years but most people who drive the machine as a daily driver say that the machine will only last for two to three years now if you aren't driving the machine every single day then um, this probably will last you for a very long time the next machine in the SVP lineup that I would like to discuss is the Viking Emerald. Now, I hear whispers of the Viking Emerald being discontinued. However, it has been a great machine for many, many years. And um, I consider it to be the Toyota Corolla of all sewing machines simply because of its longevity. Uh, the machine comes in a 116 and a 118. Both of the machines have... Uh, five millimeter stitch width, four millimeter stitch length, and stitch 1,000 stitches per minute. The 116 has 16 stitches on it, whereas the 118 has 18 stitches on it. Uh, the 118 also has a uh, needle stop and electronic speed control, which are two premium features. Uh, if you can find this machine anywhere, I would definitely pick it up because it really is a great machine now i cannot leave um, the svp brand without talking about fofs uh fofs are not readily available in my area and in a lot of areas in the united states they're not readily available however the fof uh expression the fof quilter expression uh is one of the machines that is a competitor to the Bernina models that I talked about in an earlier video and I will place a link to that video somewhere up in the top here and I will also place a link to that video in the description. Um, a lot of people cite that they like that machine over the Bernina so it is something to look into however that machine is very expensive and due to the manufacturing process and the lack of availability of support I really personally would not recommend that machine a lot of people are going to be very upset with me about this next brand but hey it is what it is uh, Brother is a company that was started around 1908 and is also a Japanese company. Today, the vast majority of their mechanical machines are made in China, while their computerized machines, uh, which are often sewing and embroidery based, are made in Taiwan. Uh, baby lock machines are also made in the same factory so you'll often see baby lock machines that are identical to the brother machines and simply rebadged. Uh, the vast majority of the sewing only machines did not meet my requirements for a sewing machine. Uh, however, there are many sewing and embroidery based machines. But personally, I think that if you are sewing, you need a sewing only machine. And if you are embroidering, you need an embroidery only machine because I have personal experience with that. And I think that while it's good to have those two things combined, it's not always the best to have uh, both of them combined together because you lose out on features uh, when you combine machines together. Um, the Brother Strong and Tough is a strong contender with the Singer Heavy Duty. However, there are a few things that should be noted about this. Um, and the number one thing that should be noted is that the Strong and Tough mechanical versions come in under my required speed of 800, uh, which is not good. Uh, however, the electronic version of the machine, the ST, 150 hdh has the speed of um, 850 and it also has seven feed dogs for great pulling power however it really misses the mark because there is no adjustable foot pressure which caused this machine to not quite make my list uh, then in the brother lineup you have the 6000 i and the 7000 i both of those have a speed of 850 but once again they do not have the adjustable foot pressure which caused the machine to not make my list i must note however that these machines are really strong and they do seem to have better build quality than the 
Singer heavy duty machines have. So if you can compromise and uh, let go of having the adjustable foot pressure, then I think that either one of these machines would be a good machine for you. But in my personal opinion, it just does not make any sense to buy uh, either the Strong and Tough or the uh, 6000 simply because there are other machines within the same price range from different brands that have all of the features on my list. So why uh, compromise with that when you can get all of it <laughs> for the same price or less? Everstone is a newer company that was started by a guy named Philip, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. He is a fifth generation owner of Bernina uh, and created this sub company, uh, and it's described as a Chicago based company that is a little bit farther removed from Bernina than the Burnett, which we're going to talk about a little later. Um, production is in Thailand in the main uh, plant where most of the Berninas are made. Uh, the best machine in the Everstone lineup, in my humble opinion, is the Everstone Sparrow 30. Uh, it has a total of 310 stitches. 32 of those stitches are utility stitches. 84 of them are decorative and then you have two full alphabets included. The machine has seven presser feet, has a seven millimeter stitch width and 15 needle positions so that you can really sew pretty much anything. You have all of the bells and whistles with auto thread, start stop, the needle up down and it also comes with an extension table. Burnettes are like the economy version of the Bernina. You still do get the quality and a lot of great features on the machine, but it's just made at a cheaper price point uh, that is more affordable for the average person. Um, in the lineup, the cheapest machine that I found interesting was the Burnett Academy. To me, the Burnett Academy is ugly. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it's just because of my personal taste, but I think the machine is quite childish in its design. And I really think they did that on purpose so that the machine could be used in schools for like home economic classes. The Burnett Academy has a speed of 1100. It has 30 stitches on it, a four millimeter stitch length and a six millimeter stitch width. It comes with 12 feet and uh, it includes a finger guard and a power switch with a speed limiter on it. So you can protect the fingers of little children, which who wouldn't like that? Because, you know, I make mistakes with sewing too. And I think that is, those are really nice features to have on a machine. The next machine in the Burnett lineup that I would like to mention is the Burnett 77. And this is the machine that I would most likely purchase if I were really purchasing a brand new machine today. The machine includes 500 stitches and 17 buttonholes. It has a programmable foot control with a back kick, which I think is great at this particular price point. It has a seven millimeter stitch width so that when you are top stitching or doing decorative stitches, you really do get a beautiful stitch out. Uh, the speed is 1000, which is really good. You get eight presser feet in a stitching table. And the most impressive feature out of all of the features that this machine comes with is the uh, dual feed. And the dual feed is like a built-in walking foot on the machine that helps thick fabrics to feed through the machine. I really do love the Burnett 77, uh, but don't get confused and buy the wrong model. The Burnett 70 is an embroidery only unit and the uh, Burnett 79 is an embroidery and sewing unit. All of these machines look identical, but they do have very different features. But overall, I would definitely suggest getting that Burnett 77 because it is a nice, nice machine for the price. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing-related content.